Uh, Bailey. Here. Coiner. Here. Duffy. Lemmy. Here. McBride. Here. I'm here. Shirts. Here. Leah, no. Richard. Here. Tegan. Here. And Woods. Here. Uh, Mr. Chairman, we have a quorum today. Thank you. Did, every, did everyone have a chance to uh, look at the minutes? Is there any corrections or additions anyone would like to make? Seeing none, uh, I, I don't see anyone's light lit up to speak. So, um, all in favor of accept, or approving the minutes from the January meeting, say aye. 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 All opposed? Aye. None opposed. So, the meetings are approved. And the meetings, the minutes are approved. Um, under. Mr. Chairman? Yes. We did not state a motion to approve the minutes, a first and a second. So oh. can we, we're, we're going to, but someone needs to honor that request in our vote. Go ahead. Well, I will move approval of the minutes as we received it today. Do I hear a second? I second that. Okay, I thank you. I, um, now, is there any other discussion of the minutes? Um, I don't see any. So now, all in favor of approving the minutes, say aye. 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 Any opposed? The motion is carried, so the minutes from last month are approved. Um, moving on to public comment i don't see any public out there so this would be a good time to introduce our newest member i'll let her speak for herself here <laughs> go ahead beverly um there, oops there you go um, my name is beverly woods um i don't know what i was supposed to say but um i am happy to be a part of uh, the advisory board here in the P Parks and Rec Rec's, um, advisory board here in Davenport, Iowa. I look forward to uh, helping out here in our community, you know, with making decisions and making all of our parks beautiful. Um, I don't know what else to say. I don't know what else you guys want to know about me, but um, I've lived here in Davenport for almost all of my life. And so I'm pretty familiar about um, Scott County. What uh, district do you thank represent? You. Uh, second. Second district? Yeah, second ward, yes. Thank you. Welcome. Thank you. <laughs> um, any other public comment? No, I don't see any. Um, old business, there's none that I can think of. Anything we, we need to discuss, we can bring up at the uh, advisory time. So, we're going to introduce Mr. Merritt. We'll give him a chance to come up. Are you ready? <laughs> I'll just do a brief introduction. Uh, <laughs> Ryan Merritt is our uh, supervisor in charge of community relations. Uh, Ryan's main uh, areas of responsibility for the department include our uh, program guide, our web content, social media content, and in all of our communication and he's been integral part of the city's uh, branding team and communications team, um, as well as prior responsibilities with environmental education. Um, 
He served a uh, critical role with the Fedgeberry Learning Center in those operations. Um, and I think I will let him talk about himself the rest of the way. <laughs> it's Ryan Merritt. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> um, so as Chad mentioned, my name's Ryan Merritt. Um, I've been with the department now for about, I think I'm coming up on six years here. So it's been, it's gone fast, but it's, it's been a, a good ride so far. Um, so community outreach is kind of my main focus right now. Um, as, along with marketing, um, I also oversee our, uh, our front desk uh, for Parks and Recreation. So our, our clerical staff, uh, our frontline staff. Um, so kind of the first interaction with uh, city residents. Um, I always like to tell people that aren't familiar with city government, uh, Parks and Recreation is, is a lot of times their first interaction with the city. So um, we have kind of a, a big uh, charge to kind of provide that customer service or that, that positive customer experience with people that don't always make it over here to City Hall. So um, Parks and Recreation is kind of that that first face that a lot of people see. So um, I help with the customer experience. I oversee the staff, uh, pushing information out, trying to make sure we're uh, you know, staying up to date with current trends with uh, communications. Um, as Chad mentioned, I previously oversaw uh, environmental education for uh, specifically at February Learning Center. Um, so I was kind of charged when I first started to help uh, re you know spur some of the the energy there after it was the zoo and then it became the nature learning center um, it had kind of sat idle for a couple of years so um, we we brought in quite a few um, kind of nature learning uh, pods as, as what we called it so we had the um, uh, itsy bitsy spider um, water play area which was a grant that we received through Iowa American Water uh, and that was about a, I believe, $150,000 grant that we were able to kind of create a space that um, kids could play, but also learn about uh, nature education um, and water conservation. So, um, and then from there, we've had a couple different um, implementations of kind of loosely based nursery rhyme uh, themed play pods. So we have the uh, Jack Be Nimble, Jack Be Quick uh, station. Uh, we also put in a itsy bitsy, or I'm sorry, a twinkle twinkle little star, um, be a star on our stage, kind of a, a junior theater inspired kind of a, a concept. Um, and then we also had a hickory dickory dock uh, area as well. So if you guys haven't been to the February Learning Center in a while, it's, it's really a, a unique park. Um, and we have a lot going on this coming summer with it being its 115th uh, year anniversary. So. Go and check it out. Um, a couple of the other things that uh, they, Jessica had sent me a list of things to cover. So uh, big accomplishments or projects. Um, so I was responsible for, um, or I assisted in the, the marketing for the Vandeveer summer theme. So our, our last year's theme was Parkopoly, which was really well received. Um, in years past, we had, we, we track attendance through um, conservatory visits and uh, obviously through the brochures that get taken for the summer theme. Um, in years past, I think we had you know, roughly around between four and 5,000 visits between uh, Memorial Day and Labor Day. Is, that's when the theme runs, typically. Uh, and then this past theme for Parkopoly, I think we had over 10,000 um, visitors during that time frame. So it, it really was a popular theme. Um, and that was you know, one of the successful things that that I assisted with. Um, as Chad mentioned, I'm helping with the department brand, rebrand, um, but also inventorying all of our, our park assets, so physical assets, signage, uh, trails, you know, you name it, we have to kind of take account for all of those things before we rebrand them, um, but also our digital assets, so like our websites, our registration sites, everything online. Um, we are currently, I think we've rebranded pretty much all of that. So um, holiday lights up in February, I assisted with the marketing and, and wayfinding for, for that uh, event. 
Um, our social media presence over the last five years um, on all platforms were up over 15,000 followers. So when I started, our parks page only had about 500, so we're, uh, it's pretty significant, uh, which also allows us to do a lot more marketing. Um, you know, for a paid uh, post on Facebook, we get quite a bit of traffic just because we have um, so many more followers now, which is, is really helpful. So we can get, we can push out that information and actually, um, you know, see a, a good response in, in what people are um, consuming, I guess. Uh, increased our volunteer outreach. Um, so in 2019, uh, and this is just for February um, mostly, but over 300 volunteers with over 1,000 hours through our uh, United Way Day of Caring. And one of those big projects was assisting Betsy's uh, teams with um, hanging the lights for the holiday lights display. So um, that, that really helped with our, uh, that event specifically. Um, for future planning, uh, Chad kind of asked me to come up with some ideas for this coming year on what I thought um, are some you know new things that we could work on that I could assist with. Um, one of those projects would be reaching out to either local high school or colleges um, to assist in like a public art in the parks program. Um, I had visited a couple parks this past summer just outside of this area that uh, had done some unique things with art um, and the local um, art community scene and implementing that into the parks to kind of you know, liven it up a little bit and give it a little bit more of a creative atmosphere. Um, so that's that's a potential. Uh, uh, trying to kind of create, continuing with that brand inventory. So we have to track all of our, uh, our physical assets. So I need to get out and kind of track down what all of our signage needs to be updated as far as uh, wayfinding for trails, um, but also in our, our our park signs as well. Um, and then we're also looking at doing a big uh, overhaul on our activity guide, which I'm sure most of you are familiar, but we do a, a semi-annual, so twice a year, uh, spring, summer, and fall, winter activity guide or catalog that basically um, pulls together all of our, our programs and offerings. And it's it's a big marketing piece that we, we still print, um, but we've also in the last couple of years developed a digital uh, activity guide that we can promote online, um, which is basically, as some of you have probably seen, it's you can kind of scroll through the pages on your phone, but the nice thing is, you know, once you get to a page that you're interested in, say, uh, you know, learn to swim, and you, you find the class that you want, you can now click through to registration. So it, it kind of links up the activity guide to our registration, which now we can track because it's all um, it's all being tracked uh, in in analytics. So we can we can see where people are going, and we can see how much time they're spending on certain pages. So we can you know push all of the the important things uh, that we want to. So, um, but we're looking to kind of condense down our print uh, impact. So we, right now it's about a 65 page document, which is, is a big um, undertaking twice a year. So we're trying to kind of cut that down, potentially cutting down the actual amount that we print. Um, we, we know we still need to, at this time, we still need to have a printed catalog, but um, I think we can use some of that, that spend, that marketing spend towards an online, uh, better online presence too. So. Um, those are just a couple of things that I'm I'm working on and that I have worked on, um, and that's that's pretty much all I had. So, if you guys have any questions, does anyone have any questions for Ryan? Ryan, yeah. go ahead, Wendy. Go ahead. Yes. I have I have one, yeah. and um, yes, we have electronic connection, which is wonderful. Right. There are still people who use the phone <laughs> to sure. get information. For sure. So one of my questions kind of connects with um, the work you're doing on challenges and weather policies that I, it was under recreation, but I think you're probably talking about that. Yeah. So my question is, um, when in the policy, are you focusing if someone calls to get information that it's a slick 
um, piece that says, um, due to weather, we're closed today. How, how yeah. will that work so it's quick and it isn't 80 right. million wait for right. but here, you know, phone yeah. here, punch here kind of thing? Because right. I still think people rely on the phone oh, for sure. quite a bit. Yeah. So do you have any ideas or thoughts yeah. in this communication process? Yeah, so we actually, um, I didn't get a chance to talk about that much, but uh, so there's been a citywide um, push for, it used to be called Alert Iowa, but it's, the city's kind of rebranded it as uh, Davenport Direct. Um, so on the, yeah, on the city website, um, there's more information about that, but essentially what it is is a, um, an update or an alert service that um, that we utilize uh, for parks specifically for cancellations or weather updates um, that push notifications to uh, people and their their devices. So we can actually text out um, you know information. Um, as far as like the weather hotline, we've kind of gone away from that just because it's it was something that was uh, that we had to update you know, physically, mm -hmm. um, but with the, the Davenport Direct, it's kind of a one-stop shop that the city is helping push out to the community, so it's not just parks that's, you know, backing it, I guess. Um, so the more residents that we have signed up for it, the more information that we can push out to, to everyone, basically. Um, but then as far as, like, uh, actually calling in, um, we're working with IT to update our, our phone service, um, specifically the, um, the automated response. Um, so when you call in right now, it's, it's either my voice or Jessica's voice, um, which, which isn't bad, but um, we're looking to kind of uniform that in a way so that uh, people can you know, get to where they want to go, almost like a phone tree um, type plan. So you know, press one for this information, press two for public skating uh, information. You know, trying to, because right now we get a lot of calls for certain things. Exactly. You know, yeah. <clears throat> so the more, we, the more load we can take off of our, uh, our frontline staff um, from answering those repetitive questions that sometimes can linger, you know, to a five, eight minute phone call where, you know, they could be actually, you know, helping someone um, face to face, but they're stuck on the phone. Because um, we have kind of, a, you know, a limited staff right now. So the more efficient we can be with uh, our phone system, I think, is, is definitely helpful. And we're, we're working with IT to, to make that happen. So. I'm glad to hear that because yeah. very often, you know, um, our frontline staff yeah. are deeply involved with right. helping someone. And the more a customer hears ring, ring, right. ring, ring, right. ring. So I think it'd be great to say. Yes. Um, yeah. You know, so I We're support working towards, that, working yeah. toward that. Yeah, Thanks. for sure, no problem. Adriana. Um, yes. sounds, sounds like you're doing great. Yeah. So thanks Thank for all the updates and improvements. Yeah. Um, and also I'm a proponent for the art in the park, okay. in the parks. Cool. So uh, got my vote with that. Awesome. <laughs> um, and my question about signage. Yeah. Um, in the no mow areas, sometimes there's signs indicating that. I understand that there was a grant uh, a while ago. Um, so just kind of wondering about both those signs and those areas. Sure. Um, so yeah, that, a lot of that signage is, I think, kind of predates me a little bit. But I know um, our, our no mow areas, I think, have probably kind of grown since those signs were installed. Um, but I think with, so going through back to the the inventory for our branding. Um, so I think the goal is, once we have a good inventory of what our signage is, um, there's there's going to be a <clears throat> um, there's going to be a budget item from the city that's actually going to be put towards uh, purchasing new signage because uh, we'll obviously have to um, replace a lot of our uh, our physical like park signs. Um, so once we have a better understanding of what signs actually are out there. Um, and you know what areas may need future signage. I think we'll have we'll be able to update some of those. Um, but right now we just don't really have a good idea of what signs we have or where they're where they're actually located. Um, so this this summer is going to be kind of a uh, you know trying to find you know where everything's at and making sure that we have a good inventory of of all of our signage. So that's the plan. 
Mm-hmm. Jerry? Uh, a couple things. Yeah. Uh, marketing, uh, do, do you work with Troy too, as far as with the golf courses? Yes, I do. Um, and what have you have going this year for that? Um, so they're actually looking at getting a new uh, website provider. Um, so we'll, we'll be looking at what that entails, but uh, in the years past, you know, they've gone to the online tee time system, which is which has been, I think, seen some good improvements. Um, you know, obviously, trying to get the the word out uh, to to golfers is is kind of a a tricky a tricky thing to do because on social media, it's not it's not the same as some of our other um, you know offerings, I guess. So we, you know, trying to hit that market is is always kind of a uh, you know, it's it's not the easiest thing, but our uh, I will say our online like our email marketing has seen um, a great improvement. So our our click through, so when they receive the emails uh, specifically for our, our golf constituents, so we have different email groups based on our our signups on our on our websites or at the golf courses. Um, so through Constant Contact, which is our our email um, database. The emails that we send for golf are are being opened at a higher rate than almost all of our, our other uh, specific like targeted emails, so we're we're getting a lot of um, interest in in our emails. Um, so just I think continuing to push out information through that that uh, that way, I think that's that's you know the, that's what's been working. Um, so just kind of working with Troy, I guess, a little bit to kind of push out, you know, if they have uh, a new offering or you know, if they're if they're wanting to kind of, you know, stir up some some new promotion um, or new uh, you know group outing, um, I, I think that's that's the way for us to, to get that you know accomplished in house. So, so acquiring database emails at the golf course at the clubs itself. Yeah. So trying to kind of I mean <clears throat> continuing to grow that right now. I mean our our golf email database is probably. I don't know. I'd say we have at least 1,500 um, in in the email group that that I and Troy kind of work work through. Um, but I think the more we can continue to to get um, you know people signed up, the more information we can push out, and then um, we can kind of also you know survey. So Troy and I have been kind of working to get you know more um, you know more information from the golfers to see what what they're looking for, um, what and that helps us too, you know, from a marketing standpoint, because we can kind of, you know, prioritize a little bit. So, um, I think the more back and forth we can have with that that group, um, you know, it's I think it's 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 been improving, um, but I think you know we still have a little bit of, of ways to go just to kind of increase those numbers and, and drive more traffic to the courses. So there you go. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, but that's. <laughs> Partially too with, uh, and Chad can probably talk to this a little bit more, but so with taking the environmental education programming off my plate, um, I'm now more accessible to the rest of the department, whereas before it was much more um, like recreation centered. So I was, you know, sports, uh, you know, theater, swimming, you know, just the core recreation. Um, but now that I don't have to, you know, you know, kind of, uh, pigeonhole myself. I'm able to help with some more of our, our revenue facilities with the River's Edge, with uh, you know skating programs, but also with golf. I can you know put some more of my time towards uh, marketing for that too. That's good. The yeah. bigger percentage. I like that. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. I have one more question. Well, hey, Jerry. Just kind of way ahead of the thing. I'm sorry. I just add one thing to Ryan's notes. Um, part of this sort of new web package we're looking at with golf will also include a loyalty program. Um, which will help drive our database bigger and then create sort of a rewards program for golfers. So as part of that implementation, we'll see our database grow and our ways to communicate directly to the golfers. That's good. That's great. Mm -hmm. um, just one little short question. Yeah. Um, probably getting ahead of this, but um, Credit Island, is there any way of promoting that through marketing a little bit more that would be... I was talking to Chad a little bit about um, a vision for that as well as the Memorial Park and the front park down here in the, in the River Drive. Sure. Um, is there something there that we could probably get out to people that 
Credit Island is there and that it is a, a, a major component of the yeah. riverfront? Yeah, no, I, th I think that's, that's definitely a possibility. Um, and it, it'd just be a matter of kind of putting together what, you know, what we want, you know, visitors to, to kind of take in. Um, but yeah, it's, I mean, I see... I'm a little early on this, but I'm Yeah, just, no, it's, I think it's good to think, you know, think ahead. Um, and I mean, uh, from an online perspective, like, I'm trying to think, because like our, our parks, I mean, we have so many that, um, you know, marketing individual parks sometimes can be a little bit of a challenge, but, you know, for, for some of our more, um, you know, like central, like Vanderveer obviously is, is a pretty esteemed park. Mm -hmm. Um, but even even with Vanderveer, sometimes we get from Davenport residents that don't realize that it's there. Like it's just it's in the middle of the city, but it, it still doesn't get the recognition that it needs. But um, yeah, I definitely think that's something we could work on though for Credit Island because um, I agree. I think it's it's a really unique park. Um, you know, when it's accessible. I know a lot of times right now we're just <laughs> focusing on. Um, Maintenance. Openings and closures and, you know, a lot of what we push out is much more um, informational. But I, I would definitely, I'd like to see, you know, and this is kind of the direction we're, we're trying to go where it's more um, content-based. So, like, where we can actually, you know, write a little article or a little story that maybe gets picked up by, you know, local media. But that we can actually kind of control the narrative a little bit about, you know, what what there is to do there, you know, what um, activities are accessible. Um. One of them is, a, a, I guess it's somewhat of a major, is disc golf. That, right. I mean, we have the program down yeah. there. No, it's... Uh, I, and we get overlooked because of the fact that it's not in very good shape down there, right? Because of the flooding and yeah. so forth. Yeah, no, I, I definitely think there's there's some things to highlight because uh, it's it's honestly one of my favorite parks. I, I run down there, I used to quite a bit, so it's it's really a nice park, but... Uh, I think there's there are ways that we can promote it for sure. Okay. But yeah, I think that's good to look ahead though. Good, thank you. Yep. Yeah. Well, thank you, Brian. Yeah, no problem. Thank you guys too for everything you do. So that's all I have. That's, I don't see any other comments here. So thank you. Yeah. Um, I guess Chad, were you going to give the? Uh, <laughs> on the uh, main street here. So under uh, new business, we have, um, and Tegan by all means, if you ever want to jump in and chime in, because Tegan is our uh, advisory board uh, representative on the destination play area uh, task force. So um, this is the Request for qualification. So a little background. Um, Main Street Landing, as you're all familiar, is the old casino area um, and is being redeveloped as a multi-phase development uh, with different um, areas, as different planning efforts, River Vision. Uh, most recently, RDG did a, a design uh, plan down there as well. So the next phase of Main Street Landing is the destination play area, um, which for lack of a better terms, will be a significant playground feature um, in the heart of Main Street Landing. And the task force was created to really sort of design, guide that sort of development or how we wanted to have this designed and, and built. Um, so the task force looked at two, there's sort of two ways to look at developing or requesting proposals, and that's a, one is a tr traditional RFQ, um, where basically we would lay out the scope of work, we'd submit that out to potential consultants and design firms, tell them what we want, and then um, get their proposals back, usually a fee associated, and s select them. The other way, and it's more fitting, we felt from the task, for task force um, perspective, is to do a design competition. So what we are looking for um, feedback on and actually action from you guys on is this is the draft version of the RFQ for the design competition. Um, and this was on Riverfront Improvements agenda last week. So they've approved it and uh, you guys are next. And then from here, it'll go 
onto council for approval. So just a little background. I'm not gonna walk you through the entire document. We included it in the packet. It's a lot to read, but um, I wanted to just touch and highlight on the project background and some of the guiding principles. And I know it's terrible to read there, <laughs> uh, but what we're looking for in, in uh, the submittals or, or firms that'll look to be part of the design competition is a universal design across boundaries. Um, we want it to be uniquely Davenport. Um, it needs to have a regional destination theme. So Mainst the whole idea of the development of Main Street Landing is to be a economic driver for the community and particularly downtown. And we want to be a regional attraction, not just local. Um, and then probably most importantly um, is they need to come to the table with the expertise to design this to be flood resilient. Obviously we know um, given last year and, and previous years that this area is floods. So a uh, key component in the design is it needs to be resilient to the flooding. Um, so essentially the way this works is um, we'll submit this out, firms will send back uh, qualifications um, and actually a design. They'll actually go forward and design a park. A lot of times in a traditional RFQ, they'll just get the qualifications part, right? And then a fee, and then you don't really know what they have in mind. They don't give away all their good designs for nothing. Um, so this actually entices, this process entices them to actually design so we see something. And there'll be actually a stipend awarded to um, to those selected to be part of the, to the um, selected as part of the um, design competition. So uh, the other key thing in this is that um, there will be significant community involvement, right? And particularly the schools. That was another thing the task force really wanted to emphasize is that children above all as the primary users of playgrounds and play areas have a voice in this. So we actually have a school board, or not school board, but a school faculty member on the task force to help make that connection um, with the schools and get them involved in the process. So I'm gonna look at Tegan and see if I left anything important out. Okay, <laughs> so I mean, essentially, uh, we're just looking for you guys to uh, approve or act to uh, proceed with us issuing the design competition RFQ. This, and then there'll be more review processes as we go on, as we actually get into selecting firms, as we get into actual design work, you guys will be part of that review process as well. So. Uh, Adriana? Um, how much would the stipend be in? What, what budget does that come from? Well, that, so this comes, this whole project's budgeted out of CIP. So the city's capital improvement program, it's, it's not parks operating, so it doesn't impact our budget. I believe the figure budgeted currently is 25,000 per firm. Yeah, and I think overall, I think it's about $100,000. We're anticipating about four finalists to be selected, so. Is there a time do you, I mean, have you looked at a time for when you want these proposals back, or have yeah, you got that it's, far? It's actually all. It's buried in there someplace. Yeah. So that's okay. I just. Well, I can walk you through. We're looking to issue this the beginning of February, but so we're a little bit past that. Uh, response response is due the end of this month. Oh, this month. Yeah. Oh, wow. This will probably slide a little bit because of. Yeah. The, getting this through park or through riverfront improvement and then you guys uh, so public interviews the week of March 30th April 3rd and then the finalists we look to announce the beginning of April uh, that like I said that may slide a little bit sure but the real I think the goal is 
because it'll probably be about a nine to 12 month design process once those finalists are announced. And I think council's goal is to see if we can break ground, start construction on this sometime in spring of 21. So it's sort of a tight window. Adriana. I think that this is an interesting way to go about the process. Um, my question about the $25,000 per stipend, um, is that price kind of typical for the amount of information you would receive? Yeah, uh, at least I think through our discussions of the task force and, and some of the recommendations through um, Zach Peterson, who's the landscape architect for the city, who was pretty familiar with this process, having been in uh, the private sector as well, that's that's pretty standard for this type. And I, I, I think that number is, is designed to entice, you know, top level firms yeah. from worldwide, not just yeah. regionally in the Midwest. So, yeah. um, so what exactly are you looking for us to do here? Motion to approve the RFQ as presented. Uh, go ahead, Tegan. <laughs> Tegan. Uh, motion to approve the RFQ document as Oh, I don't have my mic on. Motion to approve the RFQ document as written. I, we, we can't read it, though. It was attached in your packet for it's, the meeting. It's in the email. Oh, in the email packet. Yeah. Yes. Oh. Um, do you do have I, questions? Do I hear a second first? I mean, do I hear a second? Wendy, did you? I'll second, but I also have a question well, if we okay. approve. So. Right. Motion, Go ahead, Wendy. second, discussion. Right. Discussion. Um, at first, when you mentioned 25000 that's, to me, a big chunk of money. <laughs> so my question is, you know, we're looking for... Um, if the committee have they formed what they would consider qualifications and design components that are worthy of awarding that, is that in process or is it's that all in this okay? Document. That one, okay. Yeah. It, it outlines what we expect for qualifications as well okay. as the evaluation yeah, yeah. criteria. There's a whole section. Good. I can read it. Well, <laughs> well, no. I I just want to make sure. And the last thing, okay. So so we approve a design. Is that the design framework that will be expected from the awardee, or is that just saying you you have met our initial expectations? Um, how are we sure they're going to perform? You know what I'm saying there? Yeah. Right through the design competition, those preliminary designs will probably be you know the ones that's chosen will be the base of the project, right? And then from there it'll likely be expanded upon and further developed. Does that make sense? It always changes because of costs and all of that business. Yeah. So I would think that the basis of the concept of play re remains true. It's the amenities that right. we go about would be the change factor. And they'll have to design to budget. I mean, keep that in mind. And right now, I believe it's... Yeah, three and a half million earmarked in the CIP for this area. So, just to, uh, to kind of summarize it, so what we're doing here is we're voting to let the city council know that we approve of this and that we're all in that you approve of the RFQ. Yeah, they, they, to be honest, they're not asking for your. We're here it's to, on the project itself. They've already prioritized that as a goal. As a goal. We're here to advise. You're here to say this RFQ and the design competition, this is yes. the right course of action Correct. for this project. So that's what, we're, more. that's what we're voting on. We're not. Right. Um, I, Wendy, is your mic? Do you have another comment? Oh, okay. Um, so seeing no more discussion, unless it's a closed vote, we'll just do it by voice. All those in favor of agreeing to 
forward this on to City Council that shows our approval. Say aye. 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 All opposed? I don't think we need a voice vote. I mean a roll call vote. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Appreciate it. Tegan, did you have anything if, more? If you guys want more details, obviously, either Tegan and I can get into the weeds on the project <laughs> at any time with you. So. Yeah, and it's 48 pages. I looked at it, uh, and that's a lot of printing, so. Right. Uh, yeah. Uh, Ma Maureen, did you have a comment? I was just going to ask if we could, is it possible to get a hard copy format of yeah. this? Yeah, yeah. I can't, okay. Yeah, we'll get you one, right? Thank you. Okay. No, I'll print them off and I'll have them available to be picked up at the Riverside front desk by the end of business today. Or this week i mean it's not you know thank you though jessica yeah <laughs> okay well uh, we're going to move on to staff reports we should have just kept chad up there i guess oh okay <laughs> okay <laughs> um, just a couple things to touch on um last month you saw or should have received the initial issue of leisure times uh, many of you may be wondering what exactly that is, but in, if you happen to peruse it uh, and look at it, it's our new internal, basically, newsletter uh, for the department. Uh, it, it's not a public-facing thing. This is an internal way to communicate items going on that, since we have sort of a limited time here with you guys on a monthly basis that we think we may not have gotten to or we want to highlight. Uh, City Council also sees it as well as staff. Um, um, so hopefully you had a chance to sort of read it. We're going to try to do that monthly. And if you guys have anything you would like to include in that from a park advisory standpoint, um, feel free to pass that on to me or Jessica or Ryan left. <laughs> Ryan left, yeah. Ryan, who actually is, is the one who is the, the developer of that document. Um, the other thing I would like to do is, is and I'll talk to uh, some of you, it, like we do a staff highlight at that piece. I'd like to start doing an advisory board highlight and, and have each of you guys sort of highlight it on a monthly basis as part of that. So we're working on a schedule uh, to put that together. Uh, but. It's, it's low-key, no pressure, um, sort of fun thing. So um, the end of March is the annual Iowa Parks and Recreation Association Spring Conference. Uh, this year it's going to be held in Cedar Rapids, being hosted by your former director, Mr. Scott Hoke, and his team. So we have several staff uh, who will be in attendance there. Um, if you guys are interested um, and want to do a day trip, we can look at it. Um, we've never really extended that due to budgetary issues to advisory board, but I feel it's important if you guys want to sort of get a chance to learn more about Iowa, uh, uh, the Parks and Rec Association in the state of Iowa. This is our professional association that we all, as professionals in the field, are members of. So we go there and get continuing education points uh, for attending education sessions. And then there's also uh, exhibit hall. Um, so they have a vendor, not quite to the scale that the National Parks and Rec Association does, but um, uh, a decent sized vendor uh, fair. So you can talk to different, see different products and things that are coming out on the market related to parks. So if you're interested, see me, we can talk about uh, potentially you guys have a day free the dates on that are uh, March 23rd through the 26th and I believe the Tuesday the 24th is the day of the exhibit hall is open it's usually the second day but I can double check that Trace thinks it's the 25th but 
we'll figure it out if you have if you're interested talk to me about it and then lastly um well two other things um jersey farms last month uh, we had confluence here and they presented the, the final concept uh, that is moving on to council um, as a discussion item and then um, once that goes through that process, then we'll start into the construction documents. And again, just to reiterate the timeline on the development, we hope to be out to bid by late May, early June, um, award in uh, mid-June and, and notice to proceed by the beginning of July, substantial completion on the park by year's end. Um, so um, that process is moving forward. And then just a, a nice note, um, our February light display, our holiday light display, uh, just in case you're interested, we had a grand total of roughly about 6,500 6, visits over the month, or roughly about 200 per day, which I think is pretty good for a first year event. Um, so kudos to staff and everyone who was involved in that. So that's all I have, unless you have questions. Hey, on this leisure time, is that an email that we get? Mm -hmm. I missed it, I guess. I don't, Did I, everybody get it? You guys know what I'm talking about? I it should. Maybe I just missed it. I don't know. I'll look for it next time. When does it come out? What what typically? Typically, we we send it out the week following this meeting. So okay. look for it next week. Okay. Um, Who knows? I, <laughs> may I make right over here? You know. A comment about it. I, the thing that impressed me the most in seeing it was the photos. It indicated actively involved individuals. Their, their physical presence and expression was very complimentary to the work. And so the more we can do that photo documentation, I think for the public, that's great for us. OK. Um. Oh, January 16th? Okay. Uh, is there anything from the other park staff, or do we? Do you want us just to look at the written reports? What? The reports are, oh, wow, sorry. <laughs> Obviously, they're written reports, but if you have any questions, they're here to answer. You guys. Wendy? I have an, a comment that I want to make, and it's just an aha. Uh, in the report, there were top staff challenges, and one of those is in regard to uh, the routine maintenance for River's Edge ice surface. And uh, when I noted the dates, it triggered something. Um, the ice will be out from March 7th to March 21st. So I went to the school sites and from uh, the 16th through the 20th, <laughs> all Davenport schools, Bettendorf schools, and Pleasant Valley schools are on spring break. And I see that as missing a good revenue generation opportunity. So is there any flexibility there? Or there's lots that goes on for maintenance, but can you expand on that, Troy? Thanks. Um, I believe that um, that was accounted for uh, um, on the schedule to make a, a more of a buffer room in case there's any complications that come up. But um, I will bring that to Ryan's attention if he didn't um, as far as the, uh, the programming mode. But it's also um, that that schedule is, is more focused on the ice schedule itself than the public schedule of it being spring break. We have a lot of uh, um, spring ice activities ending and then the, uh, the summer session or the or in between the next large event that we have that's ice related. So I'm sure that's when that was put in. Well, I, I realize that, but it is, think about all the potential young people where parents are, what are we gonna do with them today during that, <laughs> that time I'm period? Yeah, and so, and for figure skaters in um, figure skating club, that uh, freestyle for preparing for testing and competition, um, you know, those young people may be available during that week. And so it's just if we could flex a bit, I would 
I think it would be good to note. So that's my comment. We also mentioned before that we had some um, some updates being done on the system that's um, not necessarily uh, time sensitive that we have to do while it's down, and uh, that's all accounted in that time frame too. Get your ice cubes out. No. <laughs> uh, thank you. Any, any other questions for the staff? Uh, oh, Jerry. Good job, Troy. Thank you. That's all I got to say. Okay. Well, while I'm up, while I'm up here, I do have something I was <laughs> tempted to say. The, uh, um, uh, just last week, we uh, had the uh, Chili Open uh, golf, which is somewhat golf, a lot of snow, more yeah. snow than golf, right? Um, it's an annual event. It's been a tradition in the Quad Cities. Um, um, for a long time and we had it at um, Red Hawk just la just this past weekend. The weather was really good so um, I, we, we, we got a really good summary of report of people enjoying it and uh, it was uh, the highest number of players in the, in three, in the last three years. So Good. That's, yeah. We just had that last Saturday the first. How, how, are, how is the restaurant at Red Hawk? How are they doing? It's going very well for, um, for, for, the, for, the, for, for them and for us. So is it it's still part-time for them or something? Yeah, they are open only Fridays and Saturdays at this point. Um, I'm assuming they're going to look at a different schedule when the golf course opens. Good. Great. Any other comments or questions? Thank you. Um, we'll move on to, well, Mike, do you have anything to add from Riverfront? No, just that the... Uh Riverfront Commission was, had a really good presentation about the play area. Uh, they had a lot of questions. You're killing us. Really printed and verbal, and oh. it was quite impressive. But uh, they answered some of the questions. I mean, immediately, you know, flooding and that sort of thing. So um, generally, really well received, and work goes on. Talk and negotiations to eventually bring the bike trail up and that sort of thing. So, but it was pretty, pretty well received. Thank you. Um, Wendy, would you like to update us on what you've done with the prospect committee? Well, we've been busy, that's for <laughs> sure. We've had two meetings and um, in each of those, we have been working with um, background information, uh, that we felt we needed to make our recommendation for approval. And so um, since the last meeting, what we feel for immediate action is to um, focus in on what uh, maintenance would look like on the steep slope area for 2020 and to make sure that it there's something in place that would um, keep that area neat in appearance during this coming growing season. So we've been focusing on that. And the second would be uh, maintenance issues. And so we're gathering information on um, what, what debris might still be left in the steep slope area that would you know, make a safety hazard for mowing purposes or however we come up with the best plan for 2020 growing season. So we have plants about to grow and so we want to have something in place. So our next um, time is um, hopefully in um, the third week of this month. So we'll keep you posted each time. Thanks. Um, I noticed on your report about the, uh, what they call those drains? Um, French drain or Swiss? Or well, something. that's one of the things that we'll be focusing in on. Um, I met with Chad and we're quite, we want to not have this full report, but can someone who has background information clear up our belief on what the drainage system looks like in the park? And a word that comes up often is French drains. Well, what is that and are they actually there? It's, it's, there's a lot of information out there that may or may not be applicable at this point in time. So we're trying to get a good background information to go forward. Good, yeah, that was a big question. What are they supposed to do? What are they supposed to look like? You know, exactly. thank you. Um, Jerry, did you have a comment? Yeah, just what kind of response? What kind of response are you getting from the people that live around there now? We actually have two neighbors 
they actually presented at our public um, meeting uh, who are part of our team. So we have our uh, board advisory board meet, meet members and um, Judy Belford and Diane Franken are also coming to the meetings and providing input. And right now we believe that in-house is the most important thing as we gather information. And so we're not going out and saying, here, go report to the universe what we're doing. And it's not being secretive, but we want to have a common definition of several things like maintenance, um, knowing more about drainage. And so we need to be talking in an informed, <laughs> from an informed viewpoint as we go out. <laughs> so yeah. does that Sounds answer like your question? Sounds like direction, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Um, let's see. Jerry, do you want to report on a Credit Island? You got anything to say about the Credit Island meeting? Well, um, I'll tell you what. I'm going to turn this over to you, Chad. And, and uh, <laughs> I, I had a I had a conversation when we had our meeting uh, here this a week ago. A week ago, and everyone was there at, at, at attendance, and Rick. Uh, was there too as well and we talked about the maintenance of that program and down there and we continue to do that and we're resolving a lot of that we're doing but what we needed to do is we need to go up and above the maintenance we need to have a vision down there and somehow or another connect that to the memorial park program and even to the landing down here in, in front so uh, from there, uh, I said, we, I think, uh, Richard, did you, you took that information to Chad? I'll let you go from there, and then you can talk to Chad, and then Chad can bring up what he thinks about what we think we need to do with that vision and the direction we need to go with that. Yeah, um, Chad's going to meet this week with the city engineer, and I forget who else, a few other people. So at our next meeting, he has agreed to come and update us on what they have discussed. What do they call it, the West City? So, yeah, maybe I should just chime in here. Yeah. Um, the, uh, there's been an opportunity proposed through the uh, mitigation work with FEMA. Um, uh, as you're all aware, the major Flooding that occurred, the majority of the damage that was caused on the island happened with the causeway, right? Um, and, and the road was significantly damaged. Um, and the causeway in and of itself is the lone access, non or vehicular access to the island, um, other than the, the bridge off of Concord. But um, there's an opportunity to look at getting mitigation money to be applied towards the causeway. Um, in order to do that, though, we need to have a better defined scope and an estimated cost of what that looks like to work with FEMA. So looking at that, as well as the um, Riverfront Improvement Commission's River West Division, which is basically the area from Veterans Memorial Park west to Credit Island. Um, seeing if we can somehow because that's also uh, in a floodplain and, and has you know significant issues with debris and, and stuff from the craft plant and other things down in that area and seeing if we can sort of tie all this together and work through fema as well as looking at the credit island or the slew project that was brought to us with the corps of engineers so City staff, we're meeting tomorrow to see how to best sort of frame this and, and bring these different bodies along with council and these different flood related issues on the uh, that part of the riverfront um, together to hopefully get some funding to help mitigate some of the, the issues. And uh, if we can get the causeway resolved through this process, then that opens the door for the task force to then look at you know, or at least their visioning process would be more relevant um, in knowing that access to the island would be um, 
more more common or, or <laughs> whatever. Um, yeah. Um, or not as impacted by flooding in the yeah. future. So. So more to come on that next month. And after their meeting, I plan on scheduling another meeting of our subcommittee and getting a hold of Steve Aaron so he can hopefully attend and update everyone. Okay, uh, go ahead, Jerry. Good, that, that's good. That's, uh, we're going in the right direction there when it comes to the vision part. Um, we can maintain all our lives, but we're not gonna get anything done if we don't do something forward to that. Right. Okay, thank you. Um, is there, is there any other, we, we're in advisory time, which means if you have any issues or comments about the parks, that's now's the time to bring them up. So uh, I see Adriana's light on, go ahead. Um, what did you call that? The West area? Oh, River Vision West. River West is the working project under Riverfront Improvement. Okay, so though there are going to be funds like the same way that funds are directed toward the main street. What's that? Are, are there, is this like part of that five year riverfront plan to kind of improve the riverfront? There's that five year, they've called it lots of things, river vision. I only know it as river west. Okay. Michael, I don't know, you've been to Riverfront Improvement. I know they've discussed it on their agenda, but beyond that, I just know the geographic area. I don't think beyond that they have any sort of like master plan or any funds put towards it. It's just that a pretty preliminary discussion level. Okay, and I just, um, since FEMA will be involved, et cetera, I think it'd be good to, I mean, I hope that um, it's, known by uh, that like in between Veterans and Credit Island is Davenport's former landfill. That's the area we're discussing, yeah, River West. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. So yeah, just to be, you know. Yeah, that's exactly take care of that. right. Perfect. Clean, yeah, that, I think that's the whole idea Riverfront Improvement wants to see that area cleaned up and developed into a recreational asset. I've heard the term beach in that area, but. I, I don't know. I don't. I don't think they have any formal plans at this point. But okay. Any any last comments? I don't see any lights. On. Oh, Mr. Coiner. Just one thing. Uh, a while back, we went around to all of the parks and we made our decisions of what we think we should get done in different things. Where are we at with all of that? We'll get that wrapped up and sent out. Oh, I think we have most of the data. I think we just need to compile it and get it. You're talking about the uh, impression exercise where we assign the parks, yeah. Yeah, and then also on that topic, we we discussed at one point potentially doing a spring tour, park tour, um, if that's something Maybe next month we'll put it on the agenda to discuss if we're interested in where we might want to go and what we might want to look like, look at. Um, we typically do one in the fall every year, but I think there was some interest in maybe doing one in the spring as well. So, um, one comment on that part. Uh, my inspection was Wayland Park. I think we ought to reach out to that recycling plant out there across the street because when they're back in semis into their loading dock. They're running over the sidewalk. I know it's it's. A, I think we ought to reach out to them, see what if we can come up with a better solution than using our sidewalk as part of their turning radius. There, you know. Um, I don't know. Do something with it. <clears throat> also, if we have a, another spring, uh, park tour, let's do fewer parks so we have more time instead of trying to squeeze so much in that we don't have time, you know. I'd rather have people get off and actually, you know, look or walk than just, you know, you know what I'm saying. So the, anyway. The other thing we could consider with that is um, doing a special meeting outside of your monthly. Like if we want to spend more time and see more, 
I mean, I'm not opposed to, to dedicating a Saturday morning or, or you know a weekend. That I, you guys, that's for you guys to discuss if that's something you want to do. But we can certainly look at doing something longer that's not impacted this hour. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, Wendy, did you have something? Is your you triggered something? Uh oh. Uh -oh. <laughs> uh -oh. Um, when Ryan was working and speaking to us today, you know, he, he mentioned his inventory of signage, et cetera. And so I know when I did my reports on my parks, some of the comments I made were specifically to signage. And so I would suggest that maybe that information might be shared with Ryan and it might save him a lot of time and effort and he could contact any of us if he has questions, because we were there up close and personal stomping around in our parks. So I just, it was an aha that triggered. So that's it. Yeah. Just to, so really it's inventory and doing account, because we're going to have to swap all our signs out with the city branding long term, oh, that's right. That's right. because they all have the old logo. I bet. Mean, so. When that gets to that point, and it's going to be a major cost and probably a phased approach, but if you remember last year's park development, I proposed a sign package or to do a, a I think we'll revisit that and, and that'll be this body's input time to see how those signs are designed, what information is on them, short of just the city logo, but um, and then we'll do a different complete sign package including no mo areas and other informative signs um, since I don't see any other comments so would anyone like to move to I, a, I have a comment did you have, I have a comment um, go ahead um, if we are going to um, kind of have these no mo areas and, and revisit that um, I Think it's pretty important to incorporate into the budget maintenance of those areas so that's all okay do i hear a motion to adjourn don't all hit the book go ahead maureen so move we have a motion to adjourn is there a second second uh, adriana second uh, any further discussion I don't see any lights. Um, all in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Thank you for your time.